Friends, we're about to do water change. I was supposed to do it yesterday, it didn't happen, but we're gonna do it today. I was streaming on my Xbox, just finished, so now it's time to deal with the fish tanks. They obviously look good. I like this tank. Just look at the lushly greenness. Look at the babies. Look at them. They're out and about, they're getting big really quick. They're getting less and less shy the bigger that they get. Uh, a bunch of nonsense all over the place. <sighs> Got another video coming out for about this. I might do it today. I'm not sure. Because I'm getting ready to do a water change. I'll be able to fill up the, the, the tank sitting over there and put it on here and just see what happens. You know? I'd rather an empty tank fall and break than one of these filled tanks for fishing it. You know? Which I doubt they will break. Because that 29 gallon tank is no more than... 40 to 50 pounds with water and rock. No more. Can't be because 40 gallon is about 400 pounds with water, fish, rocks, and sand and all that in it. And this holds, just this itself holds a thousand pounds. But I'm not making a video about this. I already did one. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm going to start my water change with this tank here because this is the easiest tank to do a water change on. Adding my chemicals in right now. You guys know I use the stress coat. Shake it up real quick. I don't add a lot of this stuff, you know. Just enough. I really don't follow the instructions either. I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't, but when you're doing something for so long, you kind of eyeball it, and it's always the same thing. And I never lost fish using stress coat, so. That's always a big up positive for me because I never lost fish using it. Oh, so yeah, I ran out of the last um, Fritz. So I'm on my second bottle of Fritz using this stuff. This stuff is really good. I've seen very beneficial back. Uh, very beneficial feature from using this uh, substance. So pretty much it's just a regular water change day, nothing crazy, not any deep cleaning or anything like that. Just refilling where I gotta go. I use a little pink thing so I won't stir up the sand in the bucket. A lot of people tell me I should slowly drip acclimate into this, but I attempt the water the same, like all the time, toward, it's, it was always the same, like I never had issues doing it like this. And I know in other videos where I said I never had issues doing this, and then eventually something happened, but this is one of those scenarios where eventually nothing happened. It's, it's always been the same result for the last 10 years. But my goal eventually is so that I wouldn't have to do water change like this. I want to be able to just turn a knob and boom, the water just starts to drain out, turning another knob, and then water refills itself. That's the point that I want to get into because I want to get to a point where I was before where I had about uh, 15 and 20 fish tanks. Now, can I do that in my new home? Probably not. And I probably don't want to get to that point here, but I would like to have at least 10 fish tanks. At least 10 fish tanks. And I'm pretty sure y'all can hear my baby crying in the background. Don't want it hurt. She loves attention, and when you don't give her attention, she starts crying. So yeah, this is just all I do. I just same water from the tank, I get it onto the towel, and I just clean it up, and that's about it. On to the next tank. 
pick y'all up so that I can just see. Uh, right here, we're going to be doing this one. This one I use the blue bucket because it can hold more water. This tank probably needs that deep cleaning because just because a fish tank is completely clear and everything looks fine doesn't mean that it's okay. Filter, the inside of the filter can be very, very bad. Now this tank has a, uh, a problem with just the amount of shit that they do. Like there's just poop everywhere. Sorry for my language, but most of my viewers are grown-ups. Not saying that all grown-ups like to curse. Fish water stinks. Oh crap, that scared the crap out of me, I ain't gonna lie. He came flying out of there. I'm just getting a little gravel vacuum suckish in the bottom. Getting up the dookie and all that. Covering over the uh, sponge. Now, they've been more skittish because they're not seeing me as much as before. I've been working so many hours and I'm barely coming back. I'm coming down here now. So like, for example, I'm doing a word change today because I go four days straight working uh, more than 10 hours, working almost eight hours a week with overtime. So I'm really working like probably like, whew, probably really working about 85 hours a week. So you're probably thinking, where do you have time for 10 fish tanks? And that's the thing, that's why I would like to get a that's why I would like to get a uh, automatic system to where all I need to do is turn an knob and bang water is draining turn an knob water is refilling you know and a consistent uh, change of 50% like all the time 50% at least twice a week that's doable When you're doing these water changes like this, and you're up close, this is the best tank to discover things. To discover worms, um, discover parasites, to discover a uh, buildup of food and waste in one area. Because a lot of times when you got all these rocks like I do in the sink, a lot builds up in those areas. Like when I did my last water change behind my sponge filter, it was crazy back here. It was probably like a, a fistful of just, uh, Algae balls that just pretty much fell apart. Um, fish waste, food, algae wafers that made their way back there to the fish is pushed over there. And then you kind of just look for that type of stuff and then you deal with it as needed. a little bit more and then we're done with this and then when you find those issues you just take care of it however you need to take care of it there in that, that time period lucky enough the only type of worms I ever had was the worms that everybody gets when you're overfeeding and things like that the little white ones they're easy to get rid of you just stop feeding um, as much as you do you the amount of feeding you do, and um, you use less than the amount of fish food you're giving, and oh. once you lower the amount of fish food you're giving, then uh, I'm trying to think of what I want to say. You clean out the cartridges, the filter cartridges because that's where mostly they're at. And they're probably there all the time. You just don't see them. You're most likely not seeing them because they're there. Trust me, they're there. 
crazy hair day. Look at that. So we're done that tank on the other side. We're under this tank. I already did the water, some of the water change. I got it out. So one of the snails that I was looking at the day before yesterday, um, I discovered he had eggs on his back. Not eggs from another snail, but eggs from the quarry cat. So what the quarries was doing, and probably why they didn't get eaten by other fish and whatnot, because they're not sitting on a still place, they laid the eggs on top of the snail, and the snail pretty much moved it all around the tank so no other fish were able to get at it, pretty much, because it's a moving object. So where if the quarry cat was to lay the eggs on the glass, they'll be able to eat it, the grime would be able to go up and eat it along with the tetras. But everything was laid on the snail, so they didn't get eaten. Crazy. So done with this tank. I added some fertilizer in for the plants just to help them a little bit more. Also added some chemicals, that's what you see the bubble, bubbles for. And not because of the tank needing the medicine, I put it in for my garami. My garami's pretty old. She's pretty old and I'm expecting her to pass sometime soon. I don't know exactly when, but like I said, so like she's pretty old. They live about five to six years in captivity. So um, I'm expecting her to go like, you see that back there? That's just old age. See her gills? I was like a blackish, just sign of old age. You can look that stuff up. This is a snail that had the eggs on it. See it, the back? <laughs> Snails are they're not doing so good shell wise because there's just not enough calcium in this tank. Um, I've been feeding them foods with calcium. I brought a calcium rock. I brought a calcium rock. Nothing seems to work for them. I don't know why, but I always have trouble with snails. When it comes to plants and snails, it's just something that I struggle with. I don't know why. I do all the research that you could possibly research up. I done made fish foods for them, well, snail foods for them, high in um, calcium for their shell, but nothing seems to work. Some do very good, and then just others they ter deteriorate and end up passing whenever they do pass. But there's not so much you can do, you know? When you're keeping an animal that's meant to be in the wild and you're keeping them in captivity in a cage, a glass tank, you can only provide so much to that animal for our own amusement. That's why when a lot of people want to talk about the fish hobby with me and discuss um, how you're supposed to keep fish and all that, there's no real way of how you're supposed to keep fish inside of a tank. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, they're meant for the wild. Regardless if you're growing them and, and breeding them in captivity or you're pulling them out of the wild, at the end of the day, you're doing something that you truly shouldn't be doing for your own amusement. It's no different from going in the wild, um, catching a lion, um, breeding it, and then start selling the young. It's, it's no different. You're taking something that doesn't belong where you have it, and you're creating something for your own amusement. And it's why it doesn't work. It's like when people go to the circus or work in a circus, and then the, the tiger attacks the person that's teaching it tricks. Eventually, it's going to happen because you're trying to tame a wild animal. Not saying that a fish is going to bite you, but there's our fish out there that can kill you and cause you harm. But I'm just giving that little rant because a lot of people say, well, you're not doing this right, and this, and this, and this, and then you want to talk about tank size and stuff like that. There's no real tank size of what you should keep a fish in, right? Because a lot of people will say, well, your dildo load shouldn't be in a 10-gallon tank, which you're right. It should have a bigger tank, common sense. But you can't say the proper tank size for that fish is 50 gallons. If you're going to the wild where the dildo load lives at, there's no cap, no cap in how much gallons of water that fish has. It literally can travel miles and miles and miles acres and acres of acres of water, a body of water for hundreds and hundreds of miles because they just have open body of water. Unless it's in some sort of little small creek or something like that or, or, or a lake or something that's closed where the body of water is not as huge. But at the end of the day, regardless if I move him to a 55, which he's moving to pretty soon, once I figure out if this actually works the way that I want it to work. 
he would have a huge tank to go into along with all the other fish. <laughs> 